Hi, right, we're here with more rigged and scripted football, and this is the Pro Bowl. So you can get an idea of how they actually do this in regular season. They'll kind of slip up and let you know what how they do it. And uh, some of the stuff that they're saying, they actually say exactly what plays they're going to run. Like they're saying a, a fullback option off the right side of the a field, they will call out a certain particular place. Just to keep it simple, I'm just not going to try to use a bunch of uh, football terminology that other people may not understand. So basically we're right here, he's telling you they're going to do play action fake off that right tackle. Uh, it's uh, a common play we've been used since the 70s. Notre Dame uh, really started using passing, uh, but uh, Yale, I believe, is the first team to ever uh, pass in, 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 in football. And, uh, of course, Newt Rockney developed the whole concept of passing the ball. And, uh, you know, they're lined up. They're not going to go for block kicks or nothing like that. But, basically, they're playing the way they regular they play in regular season, only they're showing you that they're actually not even going to try in this game. Okay, we're back with more rigged and scripted football. And uh, I took the NFC in this uh, to win this game. But... I'm going to let you know that this is uh, this is how they rig and script the games. They'll show you in uh, the Pro Bowls these uh, things that they do during regular season to lay up the layoff. See, this is how I think they practice. This is my opinion. This is how I think they practice before the games of how the script they're going to run. You see what I mean? So in this Pro Bowl, they'll show you plays that they run during the regular season and how they're scripted, because these, these this is literally scripted, uh, so no one gets hurt. Because uh, once again, I've never even on break the scripted football. I hate the fucking fields they play on. A lot of injuries are due to that because of the cleats. You have to have the correct cleats for these areas. And then as the game goes on, it's not real grass. It's mixed between grass and some other shit. See, see how the, how Garrett's turning around and he's like practicing holding them. How that guy's letting them open. This is exactly what they do in regular season, and they're fucking mocking you in these Pro Bowl games because even back in the day, these this shit's been fucking rigged and scripted. And this guy's showing you how accurate he is. You know, here's another guy that I'm gonna tell you that's a prime uh, example of a baseball player converting into uh, an NFL player, uh, Russell Crowe, uh, Russell Crowe, yeah, Russell Crowe Wilson there, he uh, was drafted by the Colorado Rockies, and uh, he, there is a baseball card of him out there in Bowman, I think it's 2009 or 2010, Bowman, of him out there in a paperback one and it's shorter print than his football card so uh if you are to invest in stuff it would be something that you uh would do you know that would be something that you would look for the rare stuff that's real but the shit is all rigged and scripted and by me exposing it as i said many times before you can look at all my videos prior to this shit and me finding out that it's rigged and scripted it was all about sports cards and all about busting grifters in the sports car industry before it became uh, popular. Me and another friend of mine, Mike the Indian Car Dude, used to expose these assholes and bring attention to fraud in the industry. So this is something that I'm, you know, all, I've always been, I'm already doing it anyway, and I've been doing this for a while, exposing grifters. But now that it's infected my, you know, affected my life for so long, I used to watch football all the time. I collected stuff I, I, in all sports, actually. I'm a big sports fan. I played uh, semi-pro tennis back in the 90s, like I was saying, before I had hip replacements and uh, surgery done to my, my shoulder and things like that. So uh, I'm not bitter or none, but I do know how pros can tank games. And in, de in, in tennis, it's looked down on really badly if you tank a game. Other pros will look, uh, lose respect for you. That's why I know this is rigged and scripted because people are tanking plays and the other pros aren't on them about it. They're not saying, hey, you know, uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, get the fuck off the field because you're not playing to help us. And that catch was dropped intentionally. Justin Jefferson is one of the best receivers in football and he's not dropping that. Okay. It's all points, even in this shit. 
the unders and overs is how they get these to get you guys. And uh, this Rams and Cincinnati Super Bowl is the biggest uh, is going to be the biggest grift in in pro betting because there are so many people that think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to win the Super Bowl, and there's a lot of evidence to state that fact. But for some reason. I, I I did think I do think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to win. I see about seventy five percent chance them winning, but that twenty five percent chance of uh, the Rams winning with the similarities of uh, of Matt Stafford and Kevin Garnett. You know he played uh, for like twelve years for the. Uh, for Detroit Lions and sucked, you know, they just sucked. And then he goes to the uh, to, to the Rams and they're in the Super Bowl, his first season with them, or second season with them, I think it was last year they traded him. Or maybe this year, I think it's his first season with them. So the first season he's with the Rams, they're in the Super Bowl, and you know, the first time that Kevin Garnett goes into the playoffs, he wins his first championship. The same scenarios are going on there. So I think that's something, look at that. This is what would happen in real life, dude, if you threw those passes that they throw a regular season. And once again, this is a prime example of how they script these plays. Like, you definitely watch. Look at how the ball's wobbling, and he claps his hands to bat, to, bat, to bat it up in the air, and he's even laughing about it. Even, dude, dude this is what I'm saying about pros. Pros are always competitive. Every pro I've ever been around with, or every person that's really good at sports, or even really good at math, uh, you know, um, really good at uh, education, and they're scholars and shit, they're all competitive, and they don't care what they're playing, if they're playing backgammon, Pokemon cards, whatever, they're competitive. And this goes to show you, these people could give a shit, because that's how they play in real life, uh, in, in regular season. And it's scripted, and now we sh they're showing you in the Pro Bowl how this is actually done, which is fucking amazing to me. <clears throat> I was waiting to try to get a hold of Coach Script because uh, I'd like to hear his opinion about this shit, uh, about all this stuff that's going on. But to get back to what I was saying about the Rams and Chiefs, I mean, Rams and, uh, and Bengals, yes, there's a lot of things that point to Joe Burrow being the next Montana, for sure, and the next uh, Brady, for sure. Mac Jones is going to be in that, that talk because of what team he plays for, and also he's an Alabama Crimson Tide, and that has a lot of fluence. See, look, this is how they play. Now, I don't know exactly if they got a, a, a secret place in every city that they play in that these teams can practice without anybody getting video of it or anything like that, but that's my thinking on it. Or the teams get their each other's playbook and they say this is how the script is going to run out, and then they'll put, they'll practice with their team, their offense against their defense, just like they would do regular practice. But <clears throat> the fact of the matter is this. At the end of the day, it is rigged scripted, and at the end of the day, they are trying to get a lot of people to bet on Cincinnati, and uh, I think that's where the downfall is going to be. Like, the Cincinnati Bengals may win the Super Bowl, but you're going to lose on the under and over, okay? Or the point spread won't be right. You know, they won't win by enough points. Because uh, right now I think that, uh, actually I think the Rams are favored by four points, so if the Cincinnati Bengals win, it won't matter about the, the point spread because you won the game. Uh, but it does matter on the under and over. And uh, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of things pointing to L.A. You know, last year the Tampa Bay Buccaneers went in on, in, on their home field. The Rams went in on their home field would be something. But there's also the Joe Burrow. So it's really a trap bet. You have to do, uh, you know, I would just bet on both teams, basically. I would just put, like, if I was to bet, which I don't bet on this shit, I'd put, like, say, $10 on the Bengals and, like, $10 on the, uh, on, on the Rams. You know, but if you're a serious gambler, like I got friends of mine that play every every down, 
Like, are they going to throw the ball? Is there going to be a false start? Is there going to be all sides? And I go watch the games with these guys because I call the shit before it happens, and they'll be like, uh, and I'm like, I'm glad, I'm glad you don't bet. I'm like, no, this is like watching wrestling, bro. If you watch wrestling, then you'll be able to understand how NFL works, okay? And I used to love wrestling when I was a little kid. What kid didn't, you know? So, <clears throat> that being said, we definitely, you know, you have to be aware that this is also just a huge, huge psyop because there's so much shit going on in the world that they need to distract you uh, from that boy past the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. Um, anyway, look damn close. So, there's so much shit going on in the world, they distract you with this. And even though that you know that it's rigged and scripted, you, like channels uh, that I'm doing and uh, like other people that I know that may or may, may not be part of what's going on here, but um, there's channels popping up all over uh, that's never done YouTube in before, and they're fucking huge. They just start like one month, and then all of a sudden there's thousands of people on their channel. And, uh, they're you know, some of them are really good and talented, and uh, I can see why they grow so fast. Some of them are not, and they seem like shills to me, and they're huge. And some of them are even bigger than the regular ones. Now, they threw that shit in there, that fucking table match. That shit they used to do in ECW, bro. ECW, they had table matches. So that was a throwback to wrestling, him falling on that table like that. Pretty fucking funny. They troll you pretty fun. They got a great sense of humor. I tell you that. They do have a fucking terrific sense of humor. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't find it funny to be able to uh, grift people out of their fucking money on rigged and scripted football times. So to get back to what I was saying about people watching this now, they're like, hey, I'm just going to watch the channels and see, uh, you know, because they're addicted to watching football because they've been doing it for all their life. And then I got to, you know, make channels. And I literally do not want to watch this. This makes me sick to my fucking stomach. I'm just doing this because I wanted to show people that, that don't know that are betting heavily on these fucking games. And I mean heavily that this shit is rigged and scripted football times. And they do know the outcome of these games. And they do know what's going on. There's a, that's what I'm saying about being a baseball player. See how he fired that ball in there? That's because when he was little, his pops, Pat, uh, Pat Mahomes, uh, was a professional baseball pitcher for the Minnesota Twins and also the Mets. And he, th he taught his boy how to throw a baseball first. And then uh, he figured out the kid can throw a football also. So they did that, you know. And then uh, that's what I was saying about Wilson, too. They have a similar style of throwing a ball because they're baseball players. And usually they don't draft baseball players in, a, in the NFL because the mechanics of the uh, their throwing style is very unorthodox. Like him. See how he throws it like that? Intercepted. Now that, like I say, you know, like I'm telling you right now that Patrick Holmes is that good of an of a athlete where he can do that kind of stuff and make it look believable. Like you honestly believe... That Patrick, in just even in this rigged and scripted shit, which just is for sure rigged, do you honestly believe that Patrick Mahomes would have threw that interception to this guy? He's smiling. I mean, he's a good actor. You could clearly see the covers. He threw it straight to him, bro. Like just straight through him to him. Not even close to the other guy. Mahomes is not that bad of a player. And of course, they scripted run. The guy just stood there. Even if even in this shit being rigged and strict, uh, scripted. The guy just stood there. Didn't even try to catch him. So, yeah, you know, they all know this. This is how they practice this shit. And uh, I'm going to get with, uh, try to call up Coach Script at the end of this quarter, see if we can get him to come and do a little, uh, ask him what he thinks about this, this stuff here. So, uh, we got a 14-13 game. I did take the NFC, like I said earlier. Now, why the hell would you go for a two-point conversion? This is what they're doing in regular season, too. For no reason at all, you would just go for a two-point conversion. This I can understand because this is fake shit, too. Now, watch. Easily done. Let me push off the back and throw the ball over his head so that we got a one-point game going in the end of the half when we could have tied the fucking ball game up. But there's the under and over. 
And then you got the Luciferian, uh, uh, you know, fucking Beatles over there, which is nice. They do make good music, though. Okay, we're back with more rigged and scripted football. And like I tell you, this is rigged. This is how they practice the uh, the games in regular season. They show you right there. It was perfect timing. Get Malmaz Gary, and he's laughing. He's like, yeah, damn. We didn't really get a chance to practice in the fucking shed last night on that play. But Garrett's a big man with huge hands. And he's fucking Gert Mark Magnetic Gloves help out. But in this case, he just like this. Well, he missed the ball. You totally see that. Nobody even touched his arm. Watch. No phantom punch. That's a phantom punch. Kurt Cousin didn't sell that very often. And they screwed up by showing us that. Because actually he didn't even touch the guy's arm. He's like, damn. We doing Muhammad all these times. With the phantom punch to less Sonny Lesson, the toughest fucking boxer in the history of pro fucking boxing. And uh, he had a thorough fight, in my opinion. Now watch this fucking idiot. Come on, bring it on out here. We're going to go for a two-point conversion because these dicks didn't kick the extra point. And we just do two-point conversions now like we're in high school. It's fun times. Watch this. Is the, look at the little pass to my man. Dante Johnson from Pittsburgh over there. I did pick that he was going to score a touchdown. I guess it's a two-point conversion. Hey, Max Crosby, you grifter. How you doing today? Hey, we just seen the ball uh, by you guys intercepting it um, that uh, nobody touched Keeson's arm. He just threw the ball. Look at here. Let me bat it up in the air. Now, Kyle Murray's been playing the position for long enough to know that when you're a shorter guy like he is, that you don't throw into those lanes like that. You put arc on the ball, throw over the top of these fuckers because they're like 6'8". And with their arms extended, you know, probably fucking 7 foot tall or more. Excuse me. Okay, we're going to... Hey, I'm trying to get a hold of Coach Script, so we're going to go ahead and see if we get a hold of him. Hello, Coach. Coach, you on the phone? Yeah, I'm on the phone over here. I'm listening to the, the Crosby Steers and Nash's boy over here. That's a... He is, his pop used to play in the band that Crosby Steers and Nash's over there. And they losing the hair. And that's why he put that on his head like that. And uh, he was talking shit to Pops uh, before the game. That's why he got that uh, that black uh, stuff underneath his eyeball over there. Uh, Pops had hit him with a quick left hook and uh, told him that he got to stop playing rigged and scripted football times because uh, Pops didn't know that the stuff was rigged and scripted times. And as you can see, that boy lost his hat over there. <laughs> boy, let me tell you. Boy, I got to be the worst crossover haircut I ever seen in my life over there, boy. Put the hat back on your head, you're gonna blind somebody with the spot on top of the baldness over there. What the hell? I'm 97 years old and I got more hair than that guy on my balls over there. <laughs> coach, coach, coach. Uh, wow. Um, thanks. Uh, anyway, um, wow. Yeah, he. Uh, that guy. That is a bad haircut, coach. Uh, and he did throw his hat down. I mean, some one of the receivers stepped out of bounds and came back in. So when you ever see that, there's an ineligible one person touching the ball uh, before they're allowed to. Uh, somebody else has to look at the hook. Boy, they love running that 1999. Uh, let me fly here uh, offense here. They used to try that back in the uh, 1800s back there when they were doing soccer times. And uh, they would run down the field and do a little swoop over there on the right wing there with the feet times. And they uh, put that into pro football times now. Four turnovers. Holy macro. Who the hell coaching over there on offense over there? What the hell going on over there? Now, Coach, I noticed that um, they, even in the rigged and scripted football here, it seems like this is how they practice with regular uh, games. What you're thinking on that, Coach? Um, you think that they practice these, you know, against the teams they're going to play against in, um, you know, some players secretly to go over these plays so they're perfect, you know, like they do in wrestling, the guys wrestle each other and, and, and work it out together on how they're going to do stuff. 
Oh, yeah, that's exactly what they do over there. And if the other team can't make it to the private facility, what they do over there is they just use their defense like you would do in high school and uh, put a high school uh, defense against a high school offense and you would rotate the other players in and out in positions that they play better positions at. Like one, one player over there might not be that fast or good at catching the football over there, but he he might be good at bopping the ball up in the air for the defense to get the ball over there, and he could be a good bopper. That's what I call him. The, I, I use them guy for bopping times. Uh, when you was doing volleyball times, Coach uh, Script was coaching volleyball one time, and I just don't like that damn game coaching over there. They don't play no damn defense, so I went back to coaching football. And here we go again, y'all. Now the little man know he can't throw with these big fella like that. And he made a career out of coming out of that pocket. And uh, they just don't even have a problem. Uh, they, there ain't nobody going to come in on them and hurt them or nothing like that. He can run over where he wants to go over there. Uh, especially he waiting for them to jump up in the air. Both fellas over there are 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six over there. Maybe even bigger. Uh, Cam Haywood, he got to be at least 6'5", over there. 300 pound man. He playing for the Steelers. And uh, Crosby's a big man over there. So you got two big men over there, and they go with that little thing there, with your little your kiddo, and he'll get you some skittles over there. That's why he's playing foot, pro football. His pops works at the Skittle factory, and he was he was a tell the Niners, if you was allowed, let me to uh, play football, let my son play football times, my, my, I'll get you as much skittles as, as you like, and then. Uh, the owner of the San Francisco 49ers, uh, he lacked himself Skittles, so uh, they, they, he said, well, you go ahead and get this fella on the team because uh, the pops was saying I could get me some Skittles. So that that he got the job over there playing football times. Damn, coach, really? Yeah. Well, I like Skittles, too. There go another one. This boy just don't learn to do it. Four or five times this boy jumping up in the air over there, knocking them passes out the ground, uh, knocking in the air to the ground over there. Now, now, if you was coaching football times, even in read descriptive football times, you would say, hey, fella, uh, you, you know that you is, uh, you're not that tall when we got you playing football times because you roll out over the backfield because we really didn't have a, a running back uh, at the time when we drafted your son. So that's why we had you come up in here so you can roll out of the pocket and throw 78 y'all passes down the field here now. Look at him all day long. you are going to run around here. He's going to chuck it up in the air. Another interception in, uh, off the interception was a fake and scripted touchdown pass by Mike Evans here. Mike Evans caught himself uh, quite a bit of uh, controversy uh, with all these scripted touchdown pa uh, catches he'd be making. Every time he throws the ball up in there, some miracle take a place. And the other, and his teammate come up with the damn ball just like Andre. Look at my man dunking on the 10-foot pole over there with magnetic little time over there. What the hell going on here? Got catches intercepting, batting the ball up in the air. This particular time, Mike Evans just took the damn ball out of his hand and stole the touchdown over there. Now they got to go for a two-point conversion because they missed, they didn't even go for the extra point as a touchdown over there. Now you got yourself in a way where you're going to get into touchdown uh, uh, battles with these boys over here. Now look wide open over there in the middle of the damn field, boy. What the hell going on over there? I seen that coming over across the field over there, him cutting under the green in there, getting that man to trip on his own damn feet over there on breaking strip of football day here. What the hell going on out there? 21 to 22, you Luciferian sons of bitches. Okay, we're back with more reconscripting football with Coach uh, Scripps. And, uh, yeah, this is craziness how they do the, how they actually script the games and play, uh, make it look like it's real, you know? So we now we know, and uh, we're seeing more and more of this uh, in the Pro Bowl, at least. We didn't see it last year because they didn't have one. But we're seeing how they, uh, how they practice throwing the interceptions, how they practice doing the turnovers, 
and how they practice big plays. And he, there he goes again, you know. But uh, they're going to knock that right out of his hand there. And uh, that's exactly what you do in real football times. He has a terrible uh, time picking up uh, blitzes. Oh, yeah, he got terrible time over there on the right side of that. Uh, when you're throwing the ball looking at the field here, uh, your right-handed player, uh, when they bring the blitzes in on the left side over there, uh, which will be, if you're looking at the TV, it looks like on the left side, on his right side. For some reason, that boy just don't see these blitzes coming over there. And uh, you can really hurt them uh, and make them do turnover times over there. And uh, it's been shown to do that more than one time, especially in the playoffs. That guy saying hi to mama because you're going to make him some of that Campbell's chicken noodle soup over there, which is as fake as this football here. And this asshole trying to sell you insurance times, which is legalized racketeering back in the days when I was a little children. And now that for some reason it's completely legal now to take a money in case of something may happen. And that's the same thing that they do with, uh, uh, like, uh, like Sean was saying over there, they use the uh, Richie the Hammer, and that's the same concept. You don't pay your money, Richie the Hammer gonna come get you. Now, I'm telling you right now, uh, what do you think, y'all, about this uh, Rams uh, uh, Cincinnati grip going on over there? Well, Coach, like I said, there's a lot of similarities with him and Kevin Garnett. And he really, you know, is a talented player. And uh, I think that these dudes, these people, these people that are involved in this were groomed from this from a little, a little child. You know, they, they do this in high school. They see what kind of people, what kind of background. Most of these people's family members are already involved in the NFL for decades and generations of it. So there's shoes in. And then you have monarchs like Joe, Joe Burrow. Then you have people like Tom Brady's, where his pops is worth $3.1 billion. And that definitely will give you some. Uh, now, this, is, this guy is doing exactly what Joe Namath did. Because people didn't think that the, the, the Jets could beat the Indianapolis Colts. And in real life, they would have never beat the Indianapolis Colts uh, because the Colts were just that damn good. And uh, probably the one of the best teams ever assembled in the history of breaking scripted football times. But back then, they would actually tackle people and people actually got hurt. Now, she's talking about pieces of the puzzle and all these things that are going on uh, relating to how they're going to grift you. And I would not bet against the Rams. I'm sorry. There's just something about this whole thing uh, that doesn't make sense to me. Everybody's going with Cincinnati. I was also thinking that way, but I would not bet against them because there's just too much, too many similarities in what's going on from this year and last year. But Joe Burrow is a monarch. He will be winning multiple Super Bowls and this will this is the new face of the NFL he's cocky, he's arrogant he's everything that people like and he is the new face of the NFL and he is going to win a Super Bowl it may be this year against this awesome Rams team but I'm going to tell you Stafford is going to win a, a, a Super Bowl before this is all said and done before his career is over Matt Stafford will have a Super Bowl it may be this year it may not be this year. What do you think, Coach? Well, little Frank over there going to sell you some uh, Frank's hot dogs over there. And this big uh, grifter. Watch out, boy. Duck. That boy's nose will take your eye out over there. He, uh, that's how they catch a football on football time. You can't really see it on TV, but the mask is a little extra longer. So when he turns his head, he'll knock down the defensive back with his helmet. Because uh, they, the they can't get the helmet on that boy's head because his nose is so big over there. Uh, gee whiz, coach, really? Yeah, they had to make a special uh, helmet for that fella. Look, these are the best grifters in the NFL. They show you how they do grifting times. And uh, they show you how it's done and all that. At Grifted Times, is good. Uh, I write the script on the week, and then they, uh, I turn it into the boys, and then they modify it. And they show you how they're doing the, uh, how they practice the reading script in football times in the pro games here, the Pro Bowl. Yeah, I noticed that, Coach. They were doing that, and uh, these reading script and commercials are going to show you uh, how to buy stuff you don't need and to believe in things that aren't real. 
So between those two things, you're going to do real well. And gambling is the main part of this. They're trying to legalize it in all these states to get you distracted from uh, America trying to pick a fight and start a war with Russia. But uh, that ain't no big deal because we have rigged and scripted football. And as long as you can bet on rigged and scripted football, it doesn't matter if we get into World War III with Russia. Because uh, everything will be just fine if that happens, right? No problem. Back to more rigged and scripted football times. Let's go! Not, not, uh, now when he was telling the boys, he's like, let's go! We're supposed to go to Pizza Hut! And, uh, oh, really, Coach? Yeah, they go to Pizza Hut after the ball game. The other fella go to, uh, Subway, where well, Juicy uh, Small was over there getting himself a sub over there in Chicago times. And the boys go over there and they, uh, have themselves a little, uh, uh, you know, a sub over there. And the one little boy lost his, uh, the one fellow over there lost a little baby tooth over there, and they had to find it on the football field. And they were looking for the baby tooth, and then they found the baby tooth. And the one fellow was like, I found the baby tooth! And he's like, oh, I found I love my baby tooth! And the guy was like, I found the baby tooth! And uh, they gave it back to him, and he put it in the middle of his head there, uh, because his tooth was missing in the middle front there. So when he was to buy the sandwich, uh, from the subway over there in Chicago, the, the piece of bread be you know, hanging out in the middle of his tooth over there, and they can't have that talking with meat and stuff hanging out his mouth. Now, Joey Burrow, or what I like to call him, Joey Bag of Bengals, Joey Bag of Bengals over there, play himself some good football time on Greek descriptive football days, and you can't bet against old Joey Bag of uh, Bengals. Joey Bag of Bengals is exactly that. He is a, a, a propagandist fraud uh, that can throw a football better than Tom Brady. But uh, I don't know if he'll have himself seven Super Bowl championships like Thomas Brady. Because Thomas Brady's pops has $3.1 billion and that buys a lot of Super Bowl times. Now how is this guy gonna sit there with a straight face talking to this lying grifting Luciferian just with telling him how he gonna know how he gonna win against the Rams over there and he just gonna say, Well well fella, you know this is rigged and scripted football times, right? Uh yeah coach, it is definitely rigged and scripted football times. Because I've been alive since 71, and the Bengals haven't had a team since the 80, late 80s and 90s. And I think the last guy to get them over there was Boomer Esiason, and then they lost to, uh, to the Montana Niners. And uh, it was a good game, but, you know, that's uh, what it goes down to. There's tons and tons of similarities of this asshole and Joe Montana. And there goes the racist uh, shit there everybody wants to talk about. You ain't going to have too many black quarterbacks playing in the NFL Super Bowl times and winning Super Bowls. Uh, there's only one that I'm aware of. Uh, you can actually count Joe Gillian because he was on a winning Super Bowl team also as a quarterback. But at the end of the day, the only quarterback that, of color that's won a Super Bowl that I'm aware of is Doug Williams for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he went to the Redskins, and they had a team like you wouldn't believe with Art Monk and, and Riggins and all these awesome players. <laughs> so, yeah, he won a, uh, they also won a Super Bowl with Jay Schroeder, uh, which or he was fucking horrible quarterback. Uh, it was one of the worst ever, and they won with him. So, you know, it's rigged and scripted football times, and that's how they roll. Boy, look at that size of this boy. No, oh my goodness. Holy mackerel. Uh, I'm a lying, grifting scumbag trying to get free insurance uh, from a, a company that don't let me have uh, insurance unless I was a member of the military grift. We got to get the military's money, so we got to grift them out of the money over there and do insurance times on our ass. That is true, Coach. It is a grift. Look at this fella. Steroids, the things that steroids can buy. I started rolling a shitty sitcom. Uh, uh, you get to have uh, pimples on your face. Your junk don't work well. And it makes you mad and angry. Sign me up. I know, right, Coach? Well, anyway, I love trolling the commercials. And I love trolling the NFL.
Uh, cause they're all a bunch of phony, fixed, uh, rigged and scripted bullshit games that these people are doing. So, uh, you know, people need to wake up to the fact and stop betting on these games. And I'm shit, I'm fucking sad. I gotta sit here and tape this bullshit and, uh, talk about it. But too many people are losing their money. Too many people are losing their fucking focus on exactly what's going on. It's much bigger than rigged and fixed football times. There's a lot of things going on in the world. And your voice has to be heard. You need to go to your local Congress people. You need to go to local senators. And you have to tell them, hey, we don't want no problems with Russia. We don't need any problems with anybody in the, in the world like that. And we don't need to mess with China. And we don't need to mess with powerhouses. That if they was to combine, we'd have a fucking horrible experience trying to defend off. Every citizen in America would have to arm themselves and join the military to, to stop these people. You have a billion Chinese people, literally, and you have a shit ton of Russian people that know how to do war times. So, it's something we shouldn't even want to be involved in. We shouldn't even be involved in none of that. We should be staying back and minding our own business and not getting involved in world affairs like that. That's my opinion. Take care of America. Take care of our citizens first. Then we can help others once everybody's sorted out here. Okay, we're back. And uh, this guy's talking about uh, NFL being a brotherhood. He's got that right. That's why you got these dumbbells coming out and saying, Oh, well, uh, well, how come no one's ever talked about the NFL being scripted and rigged? They have. But social media now is so wide open, you can find it everywhere. But before, it used to be in papers. You know, newspapers, something that used to be around a long time ago. You would go to your local store to get a cup of coffee. And uh, they would sell something called a newspaper, and then you would look in the newspaper and read that if you're able to uh, put sentences together and uh, articulate your thoughts enough to where you can comprehend what's being uh, written. So yeah, they um they've been talking about it for a while, and uh, of course, as soon as the biggest grift ever in the history of the NFL, one of them, um, the Tom Brady rule, the Tuck rule. That uh, that definitely was something that uh, that changed the NFL for good, because uh, Charlie Woodson made one of the greatest defensive plays in the history of, of pro football in playoff times, and was completely erased. And uh, they should have won into the Super Bowl. Look at this guy starting in other people's jerseys. That's funny. Hey, who are you? I don't know. I just uh, come out here and do scripted football. Yeah, they've been doing scripted, scripted football for a long time there, Sean. They've been doing it for a long time, Sean. Now, uh, everybody just think this is something new. No, they've been doing scripted, scripted football times since the beginning of football times. As soon as you can figure out how you can get people to bet on this shit, uh, that's when they really started uh, putting the football time together and doing commercials. They get them to pay to, to put the to put the game in between there and there. Uh, you know, they're making the money over there. Trillions of dollars are being made off this garbage. It is garbage, Coach. But you're showing you right there how they do it the regular season, how they let them run right in there, you know. Oh yeah, they be run, they let them run. They let booty tackle, and they they like to do the shoe tackle over there. They like uh, polishing you know, the fella's shoe when he running by instead of wrapping their legs up like I teach him on the field over there. But they won't play uh, correct football time over there. They want to play rigged and scripted football time and fake football time. But they, look at my man here, Mac Jones, like he is back in Alabama. Now in real life. Macca Jones would have been in the, uh, in, in the audience over there because that defensive end would have knocked his ass silly running around like that. See, there you go over there. Brian Greasy and Tom Brady on the same Michigan team. It is a brotherhood. They all do uh, 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 What the hell the word over there? Jesuits, coach. The Jesuits. That's what they call them. Oh, they do. I call them Luciferians, son. Yeah, yeah, that's what they are, coach. You're right. Um, but they're Jesuits. That's how you say it, coach. Well, them Jesuits over there, Luciferian people have been doing this shit longer than Carter have been uh, making Carter uh, a liver pill. Okay? Uh, been around for a long time. Been around longer than sliced bread. Oh, yeah, it has been around for a while. But look at, look at all the highlights of this scripted shit. Now, some guy, I'm going to show you a video 
of how scripted this is because if you take all of Tom Brady's accomplishments, it would be physically, uh, it'd be impossible to do it if it wasn't rigged and scripted. I mean, he's beaten the same team like 42 times. Uh, some outrageous shit. I'll uh, make a video of it. So you, there's my man Dante Johnson again on a sweep. Whoa, we're playing rigged and scripted football time, boy. Now that guy didn't know he was playing rigged and scripted football times, coach. No, he didn't know they were playing rigged and scripted football time. He went over there and hit that boy uh, like he was going out of, uh, you know, like they were playing real football times. Now look at the stats here. See what I mean? That's just some, um, this is nothing compared to what he really breaks it down against individual teams. I got the whole, against the whole entire NFL. There's no way that this could be, uh, he would be able to do all these compliments, uh, accomplishments unless it was completely rigged and scripted. Now they got that boy over there because the fella let him run in. And that's what they do over there in real time. They will let them boy run right in there and uh, do football time that way. It's all rigged and scripted time. And they let him score touchdowns on this uh, bullshit. Over. That boy can't even get a jersey for his belly over there. Son, you got to go over to the parachute people where Andy uh, Regal get his clothes made over there, boy. Uh, son, you, that jersey ain't fitting that belly. Look at this guy thinking the NFL is real. What, what the hell wrong with you, son? Go over there and get yourself a hot dog and relax and, and go back home and forget you came to this rigged descriptive shit out here. We're going to run the Nebraska offense. I knew it. I was waiting for them to come out there with that 1988 Tom Osborne Nebraska offense out there. Boy, they love running that offense. They're trying to get someone killed out there, boy. What the hell going on out there? Yeah, they do love running that 1988 Tom Osborne uh, Nebraska offense out there, don't they, coach? Well, I can take no more of this. I have been talking for 40 minutes about this, and uh, I just am over it, man. We're going to do more videos later on about other things, but that's going to show you why that, um, why would Dante again, uh, why they're doing this rigged and scripted shit and, and making it so obvious that it's rigged and scripted to get you guys and ladies to talk about this stuff and to keep your mind off a potential war against Russia. So, uh, Pray to God that doesn't happen. It would not be good for anybody involved, and that is us. So, wake up, folks. Let's let's join together. Let's do the best we can to expose it. I am fucking exposing these people with a shitty television, a fucking uh, phone, and a tripod, and Coach Script. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, letting me be involved in this, Sean. I like a, I like a playing the football town. I've been coaching football. For a long, long time, uh, I'm 97. I've been coaching uh, football for uh, 80, uh, 70, 70 something plus years, son. I've been doing football coaching times, and I've never seen anything like they're doing now. Their time, you got to be drunk or on drugs to think that this shit is real or at any level. And they're showing you how they do it, boy. Yeah, Coach, they do show you how they do this. It's amazing. Look, he's going to run that damn boy. They love running this. I tell you, someone's going to get hurt out there. Uh, they just don't uh, know that that offense don't work. <laughs> it never had work. It put the other team to sleep. Uh, somebody's going to get the quarterback taken off the damn field on a stretcher running that shit out there on a and scoop of football day. Yes, they would, Coach. Well, I want to thank everybody for watching, and we're going to do other videos, like I said. This is a long, uh, hang on. Okay, he's just talking about Mac Jones being the next uh, Tom Brady. That's going to be behind uh, Joey Burrow, because Joey Burrow... Is a uh, is a uh, the new uh, Joe Mont no, Joe Namath. Now that would be something people should probably look into. See the comparisons of Joe Namath and Joe Burrow because and Joe Montana and see if they all connect together. That'd be something to look into. Mac Jones is Alabama. He's already locked in. So does Na Joe Namath. He played at Alabama. He guaranteed the Jets would win. Look, he was ready to take a sack there. He's like, you stay open. 
Nice touchdown catch. You know when Winfrew's gonna catch that with that magnetic gloves on there. That boy's good over there. He good over there, that's right. That boy can catch the ball over there. They got the new special magnetic gloves for him too here. Now you can say, just run over there and I'll throw the ball up in the air. Don't worry about the two defensive backs that are standing right there in front of me. Three cutting across the green over there. What the hell kind of defense? Turn around, boy! You got to turn around like you was going to play on the ball. We practice this all the time over there. And every time I turn around, you not turn around to intercept the damn football over there. What the hell going on over here? Well, that's about all I can handle, Coach. Thank you very much. I know what the hell is going on out there. Another two-point conversion. Let's go see. And after this, I am cutting it all off. My, my, my head's going in on me. Another sack. Of course it's a sack. Of course it is. Yeah, they planned it that way. They, they can't have a lot of points on the over and under in here, son. That's how they get you. Well, thanks for watching. And we'll be back later on with more rigged and scripted football. Thank you, Coach, for joining us. We appreciate it. Oh, no problem. I'm glad to do it for you, folks. You got to stay safe out there. And uh, no ever at the end of the day, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus does love us, Coach. Thank you. Well, God bless everybody, and thank you for watching.